I love Islam. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'audhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika Ya Noor Allah, my dear brothers and viewers of I Love Islam, welcome to another episode and wherever you are in the world, please stay tuned, keep watching this beautiful program. Alhamdulillah, today we have some exciting segments for you brothers, Alhamdulillah, and those kids who are watching this program, Alhamdulillah, we have story time. Ooh, subhanallah, today I'm going to share with you a miracle, a beautiful story about a miracle of Prophet. Oh, I'm not going to tell you right now. Ooh, you'll have to wait for that moment. And we also have a segment called Sunnah Lifestyle, Islamic Rulings, Islamic Manners, and so much more. Oh yes, one of the best part of this program is we have kids videos as well, subhanallah. Now let's move on to the interesting part of this program which is story time I love Islam I love Islam I love Islam 14. Story time Alhamdulillah today we will be talking about the she camel of Sayyiduna Salih alayhi salam. Subhanallah. Do you know the story? Have you ever heard about this great miracle of the she camel? What is this she camel? Where did they come from? Who owned this? How did they grow? Have you ever even thought of what is this story about? Have you ever heard this? Do you know who Sayyiduna Salih alayhi salam is? Come on then, today we're going to talk about this great and noble prophet of Allah. Subhanallah. So please get ready. Listen, to, no, make sure you're geared up. You're only all focused. Let's listen to a beautiful story of Prophet Salih alayhi salam. Subhanallah. One thing that I want you to remember right at the beginning is that all the prophets of Allah are superior. They are the great and selected and chosen men of Allah. These are very special people. They are sent by Allah Azzawajal to guide the mankind. Different prophets have been sent to different nations, to different countries, to different areas where they used to spread their message. They used to convey the call, invite people to Allah. And one of them prophets is Sayyiduna Salih alayhi salam. Prophet Salih salam, was sent to this nation called Thamud, the nation of Thamud. In Urdu we say Kome Thamud. So next time you hear the name Thamud, remember this is talking about the people of Prophet Salih salam. And Prophet Salih salam, was also part of them people. He, was, he salam, was part of that nation. He was one of them who was selected and he's a prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sayyiduna Salih al -Islam, like other prophets, he salam, conveyed the message to people, he gathered people, he invited them towards Allah. He told, them, he told everyone, there is only one Allah that you need to worship. Only one Allah. Stay away from worshipping idols, don't do wrong things. Have the correct belief and turn to Allah wholeheartedly and become good people and don't do wrong things. So Prophet Salih Islam started inviting people towards Allah. The people of Samud, they were a bit arrogant. Some people 
you know, they, they didn't accept the message. There were people, there were some lucky people who accepted the faith as well, who believed in Prophet Salih al-Islam, but there were a lot of people who were being rude. They were leaders of their communities and they were being fussy, they were being arrogant, they were being rude. They weren't listening to the teachings of Prophet Salih al-Islam. So what happens, once they uh, met up in this place where they used to meet up regularly. So Prophet Salih al-Islam went to that place and he started delivering a speech. He, invite, he and Islam started inviting these people towards Allah and told them people don't worship idols, don't do wrong things, follow the teachings of Allah properly. But then people, you know, they thought, you know, but they had those of reasons why they didn't follow the teachings of Prophet Salih al-Islam. One of them was that according to their opinion that Prophet Salih al-Islam is from them people. So he said, well, he is one of us. Why should we follow him? Then the, some of them said that Prophet Salih al-Islam is not a really rich person. There are other people in our community who are rich. They have so much wealth and they have this great beauty and you know, great dignity in their community. Some, what, some, someone from them could have been a prophet. Why him? So these people, they didn't use their brains. Instead of saying labbaik, instead of following the invitation of Prophet Salih Al Islam, they rejected his message and they started complaining and they started you know, being arrogant with him. So Prophet Salih Al Islam, one day he delivered a speech and invited them towards the truth. These people thought, you know, we need to do something about this. We need to somehow stop Prophet Salih Al Islam preaching other people according to them. You know, Prophet Salih al-Islam is disturbing them, is causing problems. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. These were people who, had, who were narrow-minded. Yeah, they, they didn't use the intellect properly. They were wrong. So these people thought, we need, to play, we need to play a trick. We need to do something to stop Prophet Salih al-Islam from preaching. We need to divert his attention to something else. So one day, when Prophet Salih al-Islam invited them towards the truth, towards Allah, these people... They said to Prophet Salih al-Islam that, look, if you're, if you're saying you're a prophet of Allah, then you have to show us a miracle. Because prophets of Allah have miracles. So you need to show us a miracle. And they insisted that you need to show us, you need to bring a she-camel. And there's a specific detail about this. You need to bring a she camel from the mountains, from the rocks. That is, that has a baby in the stomach, it's pregnant, it has a baby in the stomach, and it has a certain feature, it's tall and it's certain, has other certain features. We want you to bring this particular she camel to us. If you're a prophet of Allah, then we want you to bring this particular she camel in front of us. They throw in their mind, we've asked something that is impossible. How can a camel come out from the rocks? Yeah, how can a particular camel, which, is, which also carries a baby in the stomach as well, and then when it, when it comes, it gives birth as well. So they thought, and we've asked him something which is impossible, and now this you know, person, Prophet Salih al-Islam, he won't be able to do it. But they don't know. Who they asked? They asked for a miracle to a prophet. And the prophets of Allah are not normal people. They have been given special powers. They have been granted miracles. And miracles, remember this, miracles in Arabic is mu'jizah. Okay, mu'jizah, a miracle is something which is beyond our understanding. It's extraordinary, it's very special. Something that is out of nature. When it happens, and it happens to prove, uh, to make the people witness that this is a prophet of Allah. It's a sign of prophethood. Subhanallah. When these people asked for a miracle, and a specific miracle, they inquired Prophet uh, Salih al-Islam that we want a she camel that, is, that carries a baby in the stomach, and we want that to come out from the rocks. 
which are in the mountain. And we want that particular camel to be healthy and we want it to be so beautiful. We don't want any defects on it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now, Prophet Saleh Islam said to them that if I was to bring this she camel front of you, then would you accept my message? Would you accept Iman? Would you become Muslim? Would you accept my teachings? And all of them people said, yes, if you can bring this miracle, if you can do this, then we will believe you, that you're a prophet of Allah. So all these people who are the leaders of different communities, they all agreed that yes, no, we will follow you. And Prophet Saleh al-Islam, he looked towards that particular mountain. He pointed towards a mountain, towards the rock, Allahu Akbar, whilst the Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Saleh al-Islam, pointed towards this rock. This rock erupted from that place. She camel, which was healthy, which was beautiful, it was tall, it was handsome. It just appeared from nowhere. Allahu Akbar, from the middle of the rocks, the she camel came out. All them people witnessed this great miracle. They saw this, that this animal, this great she camel has come from the middle of nowhere. It appeared from the rocks. Allahu Akbar. This was a great miracle that was performed by Sayyiduna Salih alayhi salam. Subhanallah. Let me share with you some interesting facts about this she camel. Subhanallah. This particular she camel, it is mentioned that this particular she camel was not a normal. Was not a normal camel. A camel that when I say normal camel, it means that it wasn't. You know, like someone is born. So before something is born, what normally happens? Camel calf. If it's born, what normally happens? It's in the stomach of the mother. Another she camel. So then it takes time for that animal to graze and to grow and nurture, and it becomes a big animal. So it's a, it's a process. Like for example, you kids, when you were born, you were a little baby when you were born, yeah. So before someone is born, it's in the stomach of a mother, then the person is born, then from a young age, then slowly, slowly you grow. Then you become a teenager, then you grow to become an adult. Okay, that's what happens to humans. Likewise, to animals as well. But this animal, this she camel that just appeared from the rocks, this she camel, it was unique. This didn't come from a mother. It didn't have a father. It didn't come from anyone. It just appeared. This was created by Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. And then it didn't grow. It wasn't like small baby first. Then it grew after so many months. Yeah, it was fully grown. So that was one unique factor about this she camel. That it wasn't born from something. It was just, it just appeared. Allah Ta'ala created this. So this is a sign of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. It's, it's so amazing, isn't it? Allahu Akbar. Now, another beautiful fact about this she camel is that this she camel, she used to drink so much water that you can say it's the amount of water that if the whole nation, whole, the people of Samud, all them people in that area, in the community, you know, the amount of water they used to drink, this camel used to drink that much water in one day. So what happened? Because this was a special camel, he used to drink so much. Prophet Saleh al-Islam gave some instructions to their people. Said to them, look, you asked for a miracle and it's come. Remember this, this she camel is very special. So you must respect this. You must look after it. Don't harm this. And because that particular community had one well or a pond, where they used to drink water from. So the people used to drink water from that place. The animals used to drink water from that place as well. And when this she camel appeared, this she camel used to drink so much that there was no water left for the people. So Prophet Saleh al-Islam instructed the people that this she camel will drink water from that pond 
one day and the next day then all of you then this she camel won't drink water then it's your turn so one day is the turn of the she camel to drink water the next day all them people is their turn to drink water so all everyone in the community they can come drink how much water they want they can get the animals to come there to quench their thirst as well but then whenever it's the turn of the animal of the she camel no one is allowed to drink water so these the people they agreed they agreed to this condition they were also instructed by prophet salih al islam whatever happens no one is allowed to harm this animal you can't just let it go let it graze wherever it wants from the land of allah just let it go wherever wherever this animal goes leave it don't don't make it hard for this animal allahu akbar so these were few conditions okay number 1 let this she camel you know eat grass and graze from wherever it wants from the land don't restrict this animal number second condition was that one day the she camel will drink water from the pond the next day all of you all the community is allowed to drink the water then the next day after the she camel will drink again then it's your turn so one day each for drinking water third condition was you are not allowed to harm or slaughter or make life hard for this animal so these were three conditions prophet salih al islam made the qawm of thamud aware and not just made them aware because prophets of allah know that there are people who don't follow instructions there's always people there who want to bend the rules and don't follow the instructions who are not obedient so just to make them realize how important these principles were sayyidina salih al islam made them aware that if you don't follow these instructions if you harm this animal then be ready for the torment of allah for the azab for the punishment the torment of allah it will come to you if you don't follow these rules because this animal is not a normal animal it's something special it came from a miracle subhanallah now in a way if you look at it the nation of samud was being put to test by the way by witnessing this miracle there were some people and from that tribe who became muslim but majority of them so many people especially the leaders of different tribes they didn't accept the message they were being rude they were being arrogant and they didn't let their community accept iman as well so they had a bit of power over them so what happens next so one day the she camel drinks so much water so much water in one day that there's no water left for anyone else so the next day then it's a turn for the community so then they drank water and that day the day the community drank water the she camel did not come near it so this continued for some days however a time came when people thought because the, when it's the turn of the she camel it drinks so much water it drinks so much water that their animals they are thirsty and they have no water in their homes so some people started getting worried and they wanted to find a way to sort this out and there was other reasons as well some people got together and they came up with a plan that somehow we need to get rid of this she camel we need to slaughter it we need to get rid of it we need to do something so they now they start they start planning things against the she camel but before i tell you what happens next i want to just take a moment let's pause and watch some of the videos let's see which video package is available for us today inshallah without any delay let's recite durud e pak first sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Inshallah azza wa jal today i am going to recite surah al abas in para 30 a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim abasa wa tawalla aja'ahu al a'ma 
وما يدريك لعله يزكى أو يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى أما من استغنى فأنت له تصدى وما عليك ألا يزكى وأما من جاءك يسعى وهو يخشى فأنت عنه تلهى كلا إنها تذكرة فمن شاء ذكرة في صحف مكرمة مرفوعة مطهرة بأيدي سفرة كرام بررة قتل الإنسان ما أكفرة من أي شيء خلقه من نطفة خلقه فقدره ثم السبيل يسره ثم أماته فأقبره ثم إذا شاء أنشره كلا لما يقد ما أمره فلينظر الإنسان إلى طعامه أنا صببنا الماء صبا ثم شققنا الأرض شقا فأنبتنا فيها حبا وعنبا وقتبا وزيتونا ونخلا وحدائق غلبا وفاكهة وأبا متاع لكم ولأنعامكم فإذا جاءت الصاخة يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه وجوه يومئذ مصفرة ضاحكة مستبشرة ووجوه يومئذ عليها غبرة ترهقها قطرة أولئك هم الكفرة الفجرة صدق الله العظيم صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم أستاذ السيرة حبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم سبحان الله that was amazing wow well done the first uh, video that we watched was Hassan Raza reciting 
the tilawat of the Quran, beautiful way, and the style was really nice. Mashallah, well done, Hassan Raza. Mashallah, and also we had Abdullah from Sheffield. Mashallah, recited a beautiful kalam. This kalam was written by Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, alayhi rahmatu rahman. And you know what? Mashallah, Abdullah, that was really well recited. Mashallah, well done. I pray that may Allah give you both blessings in your voice in your efforts may you continue doing wonderful works inshallah mashallah well done good luck inshallah with all the good things that you do and the naughty things that you do but you better stop them okay mashallah well done everyone back to our topic now what were we talking about today's topic is the she camel of sayyiduna salih alayhi salam subhanallah i mentioned to you early on for those who've just tuned in I've already mentioned that this she camel was not a normal camel. It wasn't a camel that was born from another camel, a mother, or it had a, it had a father. It wasn't like a normal. It just appeared. It appeared from a miracle. And Allah Azawajal created this like that. That means this is a sign of Allah. Because there is nothing hard, nothing, there is nothing difficult for Allah. Everything is easy for Allah. Allah is all powerful. And when he, when our Rabb, Allah Azawajal, wants to give authority and power to his special people, in particular the prophets of Allah, then he can grant them with great powers. So when Prophet Salih al-Islam pointed towards that particular mountain, the, this she camel appeared from the rocks. Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah. So this she camel used to drink water one day. And the next day, all the community used to drink water from that place. So some of the people, they thought, look, it's not right. And there was a few other reasons. So these people gathered together. They came up with a plan. Now we need to do something. We have to find a way to get rid of this she camel because it's drinking all our water. So now they started having hatred for this. Instead of using the aql, the brain, and accepting that this is a sign of Allah and this is the sign of the prophethood of Prophet Salih al-Islam instead of being good people you know, they use their brain in the wrong way what do they do? they start, they make, start making a plan and one of them people was called Qadar bin Salif Qadar bin Salif he was one of them who you could say he was like a mastermind of this he got other people ready as well they had a big char they planned it out and they said now somehow we need to secretly get hold of this she camel find it from somewhere wherever it's gone we need to get hold of it and we need to get rid of it so this person Qadar bin Salif this person he agreed that I'm gonna go and I'm gonna kill the she camel Sayyidina Salih al-Islam kept on preventing him and told the people please don't do anything stupid don't harm this animal this animal is very special if you harm this animal then the torment of Allah will come then you will be in trouble you'll be destroyed for this person Qadar bin Salif he was so you could say engrossed or he had this temptation of harming this animal, he wouldn't listen to any other advice. So somehow they managed to get hold of this animal. And it was Qadar bin Salih. First, he cut the four feet of the she camel. That was so cruel. He cut the feet of the she camel. Then he slaughtered it and started. Then once he slaughtered it, so the camel is finished, he died. Then bad things happen to you now this particular incident has been mentioned in the glorious quran in surah araf verse number 77 i'm going to read to you the translation from kanzul iman so they cut the veins of the lower portion of the legs of the she camel and rebelled against the command of their lord and said "O salih bring upon us the punishment of which you are promising if you are a messenger. Now these people were calling out for the punishment. That was, that, was, that was a time of destruction for them. Then 
because this was a grave sin. And they were being so rude and disobedient and not following the commands of Prophet Saleh al-Islam. Then, Allahu Akbar, the punishment came, the adab came on the people of Samud in such a way that at the beginning, they heard this, this horrible shriek, this sound, this death, deafening sound that shocked them. And then after this, then a heavy earthquake erupted. And this earthquake, Allahu Akbar, it made the whole nation flip upside down. So all them people, they flipped upside down. They died upside down. And they, they, they were finished. They were gone. Now this was a punishment that was sent to these people. Again, this particular uh, incident is mentioned in the glorious Quran. Surah, uh, verse number 78 of Surah Araf. So the earthquake seized them. Therefore, in the morning, they remained laying upside down, dead in their homes. And when they woke up, well, we didn't wake up, but in the morning, they, were, they, were, they passed away. They were finished. Everything was destroyed. They were destroyed themselves. Allah Akbar. Now, from here, there are so many things that we need to learn. That when Sayyiduna Salih al-Islam witnessed this whole town that has been destroyed, and has turned into rubble and there's bricks and stones and things are everywhere scattered around and due to the tremors and the rocking of the earthquake and all the people there who have passed away this hurt Sayyidina Salih Islam so much Sayyidina Salih Islam grieved and he cried so much because Sayyidina Salih Islam wanted good for them he al Islam invited them towards the true path. But these people were so disobedient and they were so arrogant that they did not listen to the instructions. That's the reason why they destroyed. And now Prophet Saleh al Islam, because he was so sad was what happened to these people, because these people didn't listen to the instructions, Prophet Saleh al Islam turned his face away from them and migrated from that place and before leaving that place whilst looking at these dead bodies Prophet Salih al-Islam gave them a message spoke to them and said oh my people indeed I did deliver my Lord's message to you and wished you well I did my job I conveyed the call I wanted good for you but you did not like the well wishes I was I went I wanted good for you, but you didn't recognize that. That's why you're in the state in what you are now. My dear brothers and the viewers of Isle of Islam, in this great historical event that took place, there are so many lessons for us to learn. Number one, that many prophets, all the prophets or many prophets of Allah have been given special powers, miracles that are beyond our understanding. Maybe for you who's watching this program, maybe it's the first time you heard, and you'll think, how can this even happen? How can a she camel, which is grown up, it just appears from the middle of the rocks, and then it drinks so much water in, at once? How can even this happen? How can this ever happen? Maybe these thoughts might come to your mind. But remember, there's nothing hard for Allah. A miracle is that action, is such thing that is beyond our comprehension, is beyond our imagination, is beyond our understanding. It's, it's against the nature. And a, a miracle is that act which is, which is performed by the prophets of Allah as a proof that they are the prophets. They are true, they are, they are on haqq. So this particular miracle that was performed by Sayyidina Salih al-Islam, it was a gift given by Allah. And it was a sign that he's a prophet of Allah. Therefore, we need to realize there are so many miracles. and We believe in all the miracles of the prophets. Alayhim salam. Likewise, our beloved prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the best of the creation, 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also been granted so many powers so much authority and miracles which is which are beyond our understanding if we were to count the number of miracles that have been given to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we won't be able to count them subhanallah let's let's talk about the our lord prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been given so many miracles subhanallah my dear brothers our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed miracles with his blessed tongue he spoke to animals prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam called a tree to him and the tree came and then the tree went back to its own place as well the water flowed from the beautiful fingers of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his blessed saliva where it touched it cured people there were ill and patient people there was injured people prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam touched his blessed saliva placed his blessed saliva on those people that them people were cured subhanallah everything about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a miracle it, scholars mention that if you were to count the miracles of previous prophets one by one if you were to count them then all the miracles that previous prophets had all them put together and much more has been granted to our beloved prophet the last and final messenger of allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam subhanallah and we are the followers of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam imagine how lucky we are allah ta'ala has given us his, the best of the favors has granted us the best of the creation his beloved habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam we are so lucky we should thank allah ta'ala for this favor we should try to spend our life in studying the seera the blessed life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why don't you those kids who are watching this program why don't you do a bit of research and study those miracles that were performed by our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his blessed childhood subhanallah why don't you go and find out which miracles were there go find out ask some scholars ask teachers find them books yeah and find those miracles and learn about them inshallah when you study them you will be you will feel more connected with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillah we had a chance to talk about a beautiful miracle of prophet salih alaihi salam let's move on to the next segment which is called sunna lifestyle i love islam i love islam I love Islam. Sunnah lifestyle. Subhanallah. In this segment, today we will be covering the topic of wearing shoes. Subhanallah. First of all, why do we wear shoes? And if you look at other creatures like animals, for example, do they wear shoes? Do they have branded shoes? Do they have sports wear? No, you don't really see that, do you? Yeah, it's one of the features, which I say, a gift that has been given to the humans. Subhanallah, we should be thankful for this because when we wear shoes, just imagine that you lived your life without shoes. You didn't have slipper. You didn't have shoes. Just imagine how difficult it would be. You know, you're, especially when if you live in hot countries. even if it's hot or cold yeah if it's a hot desert place for example you know when you walk in that area your feet will be burning and then if you're if it's winter in your area now you have to walk barefoot all the time you have to just imagine you have to go to school barefoot and it's winter time just imagine how cold it would be you'll feel fall ill you'll be so freezing that you wouldn't want to put your feet on the floor and look allah taala has given us this gift of wearing shoes and when we wear shoes it gives us comfort it makes our feet feel at ease and when our feet are at ease the whole body is feeling the comfort as well so you can walk for so long without any pain without any difficulty this is a gift of allah so first thing that we need to keep in mind that we need to thank allah taala for giving us the gift of wearing shoes subhanallah second thing Whenever you wear your shoes or slippers you should wear the right foot first okay 
in fact there's a step before that as well don't just put your shoes on first put your shoes front of you if there's any shoes that were upside down whenever you see any shoe upside down you should straighten it don't leave the shoes upside down all the time whenever you see any shoes that you know don't just kick it you know put them place it well and put it in the right way around don't put it upside down yeah that's first thing second thing when you're about to wear the shoes now first, there might be something inside that you don't know you woke up in the morning it might be dark and you just put your foot inside the shoe and there might be a spider there might be an insect there might be a snake <laughs> just joking i hope it doesn't yeah but it could be there could be something in the in something not comfortable or it might be a frog if you're in the jungle and uh, then if you're going to wear a shoe you know you you won't be you won't be uncomfortable yeah you you're going to struggle you'll just jump up and down then you say oh what happened here yeah so inst- instead of going into that state yeah the rule is that you should uh, turn your shoe wrong way around and then just just shake it slightly so if there's anything inside if it's mud if it's sand whatever it is it'll just come out yeah then you put your shoe on so the first shoe you wear is the right foot the right foot first and then you put the left one and likewise when you're about to take your shoes off so you come back from school you just entered your home you want to take your shoes off what do you do you take your left foot out first then the right foot so it's the opposite so the sunnah way of wearing the shoes and taking the shoes off is the opposite so when you wear it you take you put your right foot first then the left one if you're taking it out you take your left foot out first then the right foot okay are you going to remember that it's simple is it easy come be honest is it easy yes it is if it is then why don't you do it then next time when you wear shoes in fact every time you wear shoes make sure you put the right foot up first then the left one and then when you take your shoes off you take the left one first this is my left by the way on the screen if I look on the right side it's my left side here so you take the left foot first left foot out yeah you don't take the shoe out you take your foot out okay and like sometimes let me give you a scenario you went to the masjid and you took your shoes off you went inside the masjid you performed your namaz and now you're on your way back out to the exit now there's a rule that when you're leaving the masjid you should leave the masjid with your left foot first when you enter the masjid this is a separate, separate separate topic when you enter the masjid you should enter with the right foot and when you leave the masjid you should leave with the left foot out first okay so you got a scenario now that you're about to leave the masjid with your left foot but you got your shoes front of you and you want to wear your shoes so when you take your left foot out what do you do you do you put it in the left shoe or do you put your left foot in the right shoe what do you do so if you were to put your left foot out first and then put it in, and enter it into the shoe then what you done you've actually put the shoe with the left foot first and the sunnah is to put the shoe in the right first what do you do now mm, that's a puzzle mm, is it is it it's a little puzzle for you well one solution that some people have mentioned is that you take your shoe out uh, you take your left foot out first you place it on top of the shoe so you put your uh, foot on top of the left shoe you know the, where you where you enter your shoe just put it there slightly you don't enter it yet and then you take your right foot out from the masjid and you place it inside the right shoe once you put the right foot on right shoes on shoe on then you put the left one as well so that's that's how we solve it again how is it possible if you have the mindset to follow those beautiful teachings of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so next time whenever you wear your shoes or you take your shoes off make sure that you do it according to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i'm going to give you a challenge are you ready for the challenge the challenge is that you need to teach one friend at least one other person the method the sunnah method of wearing and taking the shoes off are you going to tell someone just choose any person that you know from your family or your friends choose one person share this beautiful method to them and, and encourage them 
to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu in their daily life because we are Muslims. Are you going to do it? Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah, our time is going rapidly. I need to move on to the next segment, which is Islamic rulings. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. Fara'id of Salah. Today, inshallah, in the Islamic rulings, we are going to learn about the Fara'id of Salah. What are Fara'id? Have you ever heard this word before? If you've not heard it before, then I'm going to tell you today, Fara'id is plural of Fard. And Fard means obligation or necessary thing. Okay, The things that we have to do. Okay, Today we are going to learn about those actions that we have to perform in Salah. If you don't perform them, your namaz will become void. It won't count. You will have to read it again. So are you going to remember this? Fraid of Salah. These are very important things that we have to be aware of. Every single time that you read namaz, you need to make sure you follow all these fard actions. Okay? What are they? Okay, I want you to not just listen to me. I want you to learn them as well. So switch your brains on and listen to me carefully. Put, pay your full attention to this. What, I, what is it now? Let's Go without any delay now. What are they? There are seven fard actions of namaz. How many? Seven. Not one, not two, not three, but seven. Okay, how many fard actions are there? Seven fard actions in namaz. Okay, let's go on to them. Number one, what's the first thing that we have to do? It's called takbir. takbir tahrima The first takbir, when you raise your hands and you say takbir, Okay, we say the words Allahu Akbar in the takbir. Okay, so saying takbir tahrima, saying that takbir tahrima is farz, and it's important to say the word Allahu Akbar as well. Okay, but the main thing is farz. What is farz? Saying takbir tahrima. Number two, the standing position, qiyam. The second farz is called qiyam. What is it called? Say it loud. Come on. Qiyam. Okay, the first one is takbir tahrima. Number two, qiyam, the standing position in namaz. Number three, qiraat. Okay, you recite the Quran. Reciting from the Quran. Okay, how much you recite? There's more detail about this. But what I want you to remember for now, qiraat, reciting from the Quran is farz. So that's three done now. Okay, we're, we're nearly halfway there. Okay, with the fourth one, it's ruku' when you go down to the knees after standing position, when you recited tilawat, what do you do? You say Allahu Akbar, you go to the knees. Okay, what is this called? Ruku'. This is also farz, we have to perform it properly. Okay, remember that. Number five, okay, performing sajdat is farz. That was number five. Okay, what was number four? Ruku. What was number three? Qiraat. What was number two? Qiyam. What was number one? Takbir tahrima. If you go, if you actually said these words with me, then thumbs up for you. Five are done now. Let's go to the sixth one. The sixth fard of namaz is called qada akhira, the last sitting, the last sitting position. Okay, qada akhira. So when you read namaz, if it's two rakat namaz. So after the two rakat, you sit down, don't you? The final sitting, that is farz. If you're reading four rakat namaz, then you sit after two rakat. But when you say after the fourth rakat, the last sitting that you do, that is farz. That is fard, that is necessary. That is something you have to do. Okay? So qada akhira, that is the number six. And number seven, khuruj bi sun'ihi. Khuruj bi sun'ihi, deliberately, Leaving or exiting the namaz, doing some action to come out of the namaz, deliberately exiting from the namaz. This is the seventh farz actions. I want you to learn them now. I want to give you a quick tip now. Quick tip. I want you to observe and also use your ears 
listen to me carefully, I want you to master the seven fard actions of namaz. Okay, follow these actions. What is number one? I want you to do actions with me, please. Number one, takbir tahrima. Number two, fold your hands like in namaz. Qiyam. Okay, this is a position when you do this in namaz. Qiyam. Number three, qiraat. Okay, this sign you can use for qiraat. Number four, you go into ruku position like this. Okay, you go into ruku position. And number five, is sujood, you can go like this if you want, whatever you want to do, any sign that you want to remember with, sujood, you go, you bow down, you prostrate, okay, sujood, and then the last sitting, qada akhira, number six is qada akhira, the last sitting, and number seven is khuruj bi sun'ihi, when you exit from the namaz, deliberately leaving the namaz, these are the seven faraid of salah, if you have mastered them, well done. Thumbs up for you, mashallah. And if you've not learned, then why don't you open the book called Laws of Salah? You'll find them there. Learn them. By the way, I've just mentioned you the names. There's a lot of detail on each fard action. Why don't you learn about them? That's the reason why we have this segment to give you the mindset to learn the Islamic rulings. As Muslims, we need to understand and learn the namaz properly so that we can beautify, we can feel the spirituality in namaz. Subhanallah. Now, we're going to move on to our final segment of the program called Islamic Manners. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. Islamic manners. Today we have a very important topic. What is it? Fear of Allah Almighty. Now, first of all, I want to remind you in this segment, Islamic manners, we speak about those things that beautify your character. And today's topic, fear of Allah, this is essential part in your life. A person who has fear of Allah, what does that mean? Fear of Allah, love and fear of Allah is very, very important for us. We have to have hope in Allah Almighty. We always hope for mercy and blessings. At the same time, we have to Remember that if we do something wrong, then the torment of Allah can come to us and things can become difficult for us. Therefore, it's important that we have fear of Allah because in Islam, there are things that we should be doing and there are things that we need to stay away from. There are so many things that people do which are wrong. We will look at certain things as offensive, you will look at them as crimes. If you perform such activity, then you'll end up in prison. It happens, doesn't it? It happens in our society. If you do wrong things, there's consequences, isn't there? Likewise, if you go against the commands of Allah, and if you perform haram acts, then you become a disobedient person. And a person who is disobedient, he could earn the wrath of Allah. He could earn the torment and punishment of Allah. Therefore, as Muslims, we should always be fearful. We should always be scared that what if I do something wrong and my Allah becomes angry with me? What if I do something stupid? What if I miss my namaz on purpose? What if my Allah you know, doesn't accept my tawbah? So fearing Allah Almighty is very important. And one of the beauty of this is that if a person who has fear of Allah in his heart, then this person will stay away from bad things. That's really beautiful, that's nice. It stops you, it keeps you away from evil, it keeps you away from naughty things. You won't mess about, you won't break people's hearts, you won't swear, you won't mess around, you won't do wrong things in school, you won't break people's windows, you won't snatch other people's belongings, because you have fear of Allah in your heart. So as Muslims, it is important that we have fear of Allah in our heart. So therefore, please, all the kids who are watching this program, make sure you have this mindset as well.
At the same time, we should look at the bad actions, the naughty things, the really bad and evil things, and we should look at them and stay away from them. Steer away from them. Don't even look at them. Don't even think about them. Because if we were to do bad things, haram things, wrong things, then what if because of doing bad things, our Rabb, Allah, becomes angry with us? What if Allah does a shower His mercy upon us, then what's going to happen to us? What if Allah puts our name in the list of those who are going to be punished? Then what's going to happen to us? So as Muslims, this is a very important part in our life. And we have to be fearful. Yeah, at the same time, we should have hope as well. We have hope in the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. Always remain hopeful. Never give up on the hope. Because Allah Azawajal is the most merciful. He is the most gracious. He is the most kind and most generous. But at the same time, Allah is the one who has destroyed many nations. Those disobedient people. Today we spoke about the people of Thamud, the nation of Prophet Saleh al-Islam, those who were disobedient, they were destroyed, they passed away, they died upside down. Everything was turned upside down for them. They passed away, they died. That is scary, we should be fearful. Or when you see uh, like something big happening around us, you know, like for example an earthquake or a flood, these things should make us fearful. What if we were in that state? So always have fear in your heart for Allah Azawajal. And a person who has this, he won't end up doing wrong things. He'll always be, he, will, he will always discipline himself. He'll be, he'll be in control of himself. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, today we had a great opportunity. We spoke on various topics. Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of the program now. So I hope you enjoyed this. You found it informative. Anyway, look after yourself. Stay well. Have a nice coming week, inshallah. Stay tuned to Madani channel. May Allah Ta'ala keep us well and safe. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam, I love Islam.